Okay, in this video, I'm not going to do the question. I will walk you through step by step and tell you what to pay attention to uh, in this particular question from FedMarch 19 paper 52 question 2. So this is a highly requested question or highly asked question through the years because this, this specific paper and this specific variant, even question 1 is just a big, big headache, lah, pain in the back. Okay, So if you haven't tried the question yet, I would suggest you watch the videos about how to deal with log and unit and prefix and uncertainty. Try it out yourself and then come back again to mark the paper together with me. Okay. So in this question, let's read the question first. A student is investigating the motion of a small steel ball in cooking oil. So this boy is going to fall down and go, Pew! measure the oil's resistance to the ball's motion is called viscosity and viscosity has a unit of pascal second miss i got learned viscosity man nope i mean you got learn a bit of viscous drag in as now do i need to know no you don't so the thing about paper five that even if you don't know any theory you can still do especially question two okay so this student drops a ball into a cylinder of oil like this because they are testing your skills all right and we're going to heat up the cooking oil, I guess, so it's different temperature. Anyway, the velocity of the ball is measured when it becomes constant, terminal velocity, and then the viscosity of the oil is determined. How did they determine, miss? Don't know. They didn't say. Doesn't matter. Experiment is repeated for different temperatures of oil. Okay, sure. So you just have to assume that they have a method to measure the viscosity that you don't know about because we didn't learn too much about viscosity, okay? But you don't write like that in paper 5, question 1. Uh. You write like that in question 1, you know marks already because you never tell how you measure the viscosity. So if this is paper 5, fail, fail. But this is, I mean, if this is paper 5, question 1, then it's a fail, fail, fail. Okay, but this is not, they are not answering the question, they are giving you the question. Okay, so let's not judge the question, let's continue. Experiment is repeated for different temperatures of oil. And it is suggested that viscosity, nu, symbol pronounced as nu, and the Celsius temperature is related by this equation. P and Q are constants. A graph is plotted of log nu on the y-axis and log theta on the x-axis. Determine expressions for gradient and y-intercept. Okay, so this one should be just routine work by now. If you don't know how to log or when to log and learn, go and watch the videos where I talk about this. I'm not going to talk too much about this now. I will log both sides because this one is log. So log nu will be equal to log p theta power q. Okay, so if I rearrange this, log nu will be equal to log theta power q, I bring the q in front, plus log p. Is it okay to skip steps? Definitely, because you, there's no marks for the steps here. Okay, it's only one mark. y is equal to mx plus c. So our x-axis is log theta, correct already. Our y-axis is log nu, correct already. So hence, Gradient is equal to Q and Y intercept is log P. I think this one all can get marked. Uh -huh. This correct, you get one mark. That's all. No other thing to talk about. All right, next, you are given values of theta. So at different temperature, you have different viscosity. And fun fact, you see, the hotter the oil, the less viscous it is. So if you have ever fried an egg for yourself, you will notice that when the oil is cold, it doesn't flow as well on the pan. But if the pan is hot, then the oil will be like water. Okay? That's why you can see viscosity decreasing. You do know a bit one. You just we just never quantify it for me. So calculate and record the value of theta in degrees Celsius and nu in 10 to the power of negative 3 Pascal. Okay, I'm gonna do one and then I will let you do the rest. Okay. So the right way of doing this is always check the prefix. Okay, guys. Always check the prefix. So here there is no prefix degree Celsius. So here degree Celsius, meaning you can press directly log 38. So I'm going to press now log 38. 1.57. Okay, okay, miss, miss, miss. How many? Uh? Okay, how many SF? How many DP? You ask. Well, quick one. This is 2 SF. 
right? So when you migrate over, since this is 2SF, when you reach here, this should be 2 to 3 dp. Do you write 2 to 3 dp? Let's say I write 3 dp. 1.579. 1 1.580. Okay. You can also write 1.58. Up to you. Uh, here's a pro tip. Use the graph to help me. So if you scroll down and look at the graph, this graph, uh, someone draw one, I borrow. La. Okay, now nah, nah, I show you the graph. So if you scroll and look at the graph, you will notice that theta, what is the smallest possible reading for theta? Can you read 1.58? Can I miss 1.55? So this is 5, 6, 5, 7, 5, 8. So 5, 8 is here. Can you read an extra decimal point? Can. So you can put 1.580 just so that you can read the extra decimal point. So you can use that graph to help you, okay? So now I'm going to repeat again for nu. Nu is also 2SF. So when you reach here, it should be 2 to 3 dp, okay? So I'm going to press my calculator again, but, 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 do you notice something? This 10 to the negative 3 is included in the units. So you should be pressing 41, okay? Because this prefix together follow inside the log already, okay? So this will be log 41, 1.61. So you can put 1.61 whenever I hover my tablet, my pen tablet over the calculator just cannot deal. Hmm. Okay, never mind. Log 41. So you can write 1.61 or you can write 1.613. Okay, how do you know that you shouldn't include the prefix? You can use this to guide you. Can you find 1.61? Yes, 1.61 is here. Can you find 1.613? Uh, you could plot to 1.5. So I can include 1.3 if I want to. Okay, so include log. So the second thing is, if let's say you accidentally or you accidentally include 10 to the power of negative 3 in your calculator. So let's say instead of pressing log 41, you press log 41 times 10 to the power of negative 3. This will give you negative 1.38. Let's say negative 1.3, negative 1.39. You scroll here, where got negative 1.39? Where got? That means you prefix wrongly. That means you should check your table. Okay? So check your table. Okay. Uh, so the graph will help you decide if you have handled your units and your prefix correctly. Okay, so you repeat this for all six data points, and that should arrive you at this table here. Something like this. Okay, you can go and check out the mark scheme on internet, Pet March 19, paper 52. All right, so as long as you get this one correct, you get marks already, and this is the absolute uncertainty. Okay, so this student, she wrote 2 SF, which is okay because generally we do allow a mixture of SF, but if you don't want to, you don't need to. You can write one SF. It's okay that the decimal points don't align. But if you want just consistency like this student, you can do like this. Lah. So you may be wondering, how did she find this uncertainty? Nah, she used this. She used this. Uh, he or she used this identity. Lah. So maybe I'll press the first one for you. Okay. So I'll write the identity here. The uncertainty of log nu will be equal to 1 over ln 10 because the base is 10. Okay. Uncertainty in viscosity over viscosity. So for the first reading, it will be 1 over ln 10, 1 over 41. Let's press that. 1 over ln 41 ln 10, right? 41 times 10. 
okay i will get 0 0.011 so what i will write is actually 1.61 plus minus 0 0.01 then 0 0.01 or I will write 1.613 plus minus 0 0.011 just to stick to the SF. Ta-da! There, 1, 1. You will like. La. Actually, less SF is a good one. Easier to plot the graph. It'll be slightly less accurate, but to be honest, as long as you can get the best fit line, you're okay. So go and practice and decide which one you want to do. You want to write less DP? You want to write the more DP option? Up to you. So I tend to use identities. You want to use the first method, which is the half the range, also okay. So we complete and repeat the process six times, and we will arrive at some reading that looks like this. So all of this is uh, two marks. <laughs> so sad. Yes, two marks. So the value of log theta and log nu is one mark. This one and this one is one mark. And the value of absolute uncertainty is also a wide mark, so two. Okay, next part. Plot a graph and include error bars. So I'm not going to talk too much about the detail already. You should know what is a good graph, what is a good error bar, and how to mark your own graph and error bar. So this is a sample candidate's answer, and uh, it looks pretty good to me, okay? Uh, I can see the triangle, I can see everything. So you go and try, okay? Or you go and watch uh, other videos where we talk about how to error bar. I'm not going to talk about this here. So assuming that your uh, plot and error bar is done, okay? There are other videos in this playlist that teaches you how to do it. I want to keep this video a bit shorter. So draw a straight line of best fit, worst best fit line. Same thing standard, uh, must pass through all the error bars, okay? So determine the gradient and the line the, of the line of best fit and include absolute uncertainty. So if you look at what this student did, he or she found the best fit line. So I saw this, I give one mark already. The worst fit line. And then you found the uncertainty by subtracting. So this is also half the range method. But what we are doing is we are assuming that, let's say this is your range, and here is your best fit line. So this is worst fit line. So here to here is already your uncertainty in gradient. So you just minus. Okay. Or here is your worst fit. Depending on whether you draw the worst fit line as steeper or less steep, no? whether you take top joint to bottom or bottom join to top. Go and draw. Okay. So hopefully when you watch this video, you have already done some paper five questions and you have already watched the previous videos where I talk about what is this and why is this important. If not, this video is going to be 40 minutes, okay? Go watch. All right. So once we find the gradient and its related uncertainty, like this one, you can see a student very helpfully change it to uh, the suitable amount of SF, okay? Because this one, we're trying to round to one SF. So we're going to continue now. Graph looks okay, uh, range is okay. Okay, so now we need to find the line, the y-intercept of the best fit line. So some students, they will draw until here and try to read off the graph. You cannot read off the graph because you see, we didn't start from zero, zero. Do not make that common mistake anymore, all right? So always use y equal to mx plus c. So we use y equal to mx plus c using a coordinate and the gradient of the worst fit line and then the coordinate and the gradient of the best fit line. So if I see this calculation and then I see the method it checks out, you will get one mark. So this is again half the range method because there's no identity to find uncertainty when you calculate something directly from the graph. Okay, here's the kicker. Use all your answers that you calculated just now. Determine the value of P and Q and include the absolute uncertainties in your answer. Okay, this one I'll do with you. But before that, I'm going to steal the student's y-intercept and gradient answer first. Right, so I have congregated all the examples from A, C part 3, and C part 4. A, C part 3, C part 4. And now we have to find the values of P and Q, right? So I guess I'll find Q first because Q is easier. All right, so from here, 
I can say that. And also you have to include absolute uncertainties. Okay, okay, let's look for Q first. Q is equal to gradient. So Q will be equal to negative 1.43. Okay, then you also just have to mention that the uncertainty in Q is also equal to the uncertainty in gradient, which is equal to plus minus 0 0.08. So whatever you wrote up there, you can just copy paste here, like 1.43 plus minus 0 0.08. This is okay, no problem. Okay, no problem. The panic happens for the second one. Okay, so we have the value for y intercept, but I know y intercept is equal to log p. Okay, so how do we find p? Uh? p will be equal to 10 to the power of y intercept. Hey, Guys, this P we read or we calculate from where? P here is from the y-axis. How do you know it's from the y-axis? Because when you calculate the y-intercept, it is from the y-axis. This y-intercept from y-axis. So if it's from y-axis, I'm going to scroll up and check. Look at this. 10 to the negative 3. So if I bring this one over, meaning this uh, y-intercept is in, so I'm going to write here for log nu slash 10 to the negative 3 p a s. Okay. So this one actually need to multiply by 10 to the negative 3. I mean, you can include the unit, lah, PAS. Okay? Don't have unit also, never mind. So this is 10, 3.87 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Okay? So this P is in PAS, negative 3. This P has this prefix here. So when I bring over and unfreeze, the negative 3 must carry over. Okay, then I can press my calculator for P. Okay, so if I press my beautiful, beautiful calculator, I should get 7.41 so 10 to the power of 3.87 okay so 7413 7.413 times 3 7.41 actually times 10 to the power of negative 3 hang on 7410 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So this is 7.41, no? Mm. Do I need unit? Ah? No need. They didn't say you don't write. Lah. You write already, you give yourself a headache. Why is the unit for gradient? Log is unitless one. There's no unit here. One. The unit is inside. So technically, strictly speaking, the radian is just the x-axis, so it's degree Celsius. Hey, no, there's no unit, it's unitless because this is also log. U log, I log, this one is unitless. Okay, I'll write here. Just a note. They didn't ask, but this is unitless. And this unit is PAS, pass. Okay. Right, how do we find the absolute uncertainty in P? There is no identity for 10 to the power of something. But we do have y-intercept uh, as maximum or minimum value. Okay, so do you know the worst fit line y-intercept? You can use half max min, also can. Okay, so maybe I'll do that because that feels a bit familiar to you. But you could also use the worst fit line. Okay, hang on, let me show you what I mean. 
by creating more space for myself. You need more space. Okay, so you want to find uncertainty. For P, you will take either P max minus P min divide by 2. Okay, or you take P for the best fit line minus P for the worst fit line modulus. Up to you lah. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do well, let's say I do the first one. Lah. So the uncertainty P will be equal to P max, which is 10 to the power of 3.87. Plus zero point one four. So you show here very clearly, uh, three point eight seven plus zero point one four, big bracket times ten to the power of negative three, maximum value, minus ten to the power of three point eight seven minus zero point one four, times ten to the power of negative three, divided by two. So we are using the max minus min method. Looks very long, but it should be fairly straightforward to press, okay? I press here for you to see that. Okay, hang on. What happened there? Okay, there we go. We're back, we're back. Right. 10 to the power of 3.8 plus 0 0.14, okay? Minus... 10. So you don't use these values if you unless you actually get the exact same value. Lah, then hook me up. I'll introduce you to my student. If not, use your own value, okay? Minus 0 0.14. Okay? So I'm looking for the range, okay? So this is my range, and then I divide by 2. But there is the prefix here, 10 to the negative 3, which I didn't include just now. So this is 2.43. 2.4, 2.4 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So yes, this uncertainty is quite big. So you can put plus minus 2.4. When you include the 1, the actual value, hey, 10 to the power of 3, 2.4, yeah. The actual value doesn't matter. Because it's the method that counts. So please show your method. Even better if you first write that you are using this one. Okay. So this is one. Let's try the second one and see whether we get the same answer. Okay. I'm just going to pop this up here. Change card. Okay. Hi. So I guess or we can use uncertainty in P is equal to modulus. P value of your best fit line minus P value of your worst fit line. This is a bit easier on your calculator. So we already have P value of best fit line 7.41. Now we need to minus worst fit line. This is 10 to the power. I need to find what is the worst fit Y intercept. BRB. Ah, worst fit Y intercept. 7 block 3.74. Okay, I'm sticking to consistent SF, okay? 3.74. So 10 to the power of 3.74 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Modulus. Okay. Press my friend calculator. 10 to the power of 3.74. This is equal to this. Okay times 10 to the power of negative 3, which is this, okay? Then I take 7.41 minus answer, 1.91, so 2.0. So if you round it to 1 SF, they are still the same. This is 2, and this one is 1, it's 2 as well. The important thing here is to show, you want to get your mark, that one mark for your uncertainty, you need to show this, this whole thing. Or this thing, 
this whole thing show the method we are looking for correct method not so much as what number you get of course if you press your calculator wrongly and we double check then you will lose the mark now. but let's assume you press your calculator correctly so what is important is to show what you are doing to arrive at the uncertainty okay so the question here is do you need to change the sf this is the mark scheme so i will say it's up to you okay so generally speaking we only care that it is two to three sf so if you are saying two to three sf you're okay all right and you must have the correct power of 10 for q from c part three and c part four so what is c part three and c part four leh? c part three and four is this one so basically i need to have this p to the correct power of 10 now which should be is this number lah, seven point something and one point something okay so if you make a prefix error the prefix error will be deducted here okay but let's say you didn't and now the absolute uncertainty they said worst fit line or worst acceptable line and then best fit line okay so you could do that or you could do my method also can all right correct substitution of numbers must be c so everything that i highlight in red here must be seen show all of this substitution is important show substitution okay that's it you can leave it that way it's two to three sf please don't write extra sf enough well two to three is good if you want to change this to 7.4 plus minus 2.0 two not 2.0 two also can but don't change this to 2.0 uh. so you can put 2.4 you can put 1.9 both are okay 2.4 is okay 1.9 is okay two is not okay unless you write seven plus minus two just don't do that lah. this is fine okay so last part yay using your answers determine the temperature where the viscosity of the cooking oil is 0 0.10 so basically they are saying find nu when theta is uh no wait find theta sorry find theta when nu is 0 0.10 pas okay let's see if you pass or not you have two options let's go back to question the first part of the question ah here here you could use this equation nu is equal to p theta q or you could use the linearized equation because we have just calculated values of p and q so you can use this or you can use this they are both okay it's really up to you now for you i do both lah. i do both lah. so i start with the first one and i i end with the second one okay I'm going to start using the first one. Nu is equal to P theta Q. Let's go. So first method. Nu is equal to P theta to the power of Q. Okay, so Miss, can I just substitute? Uh? Sure, substitute. Uh? Now, you have to be very careful when you substitute because if you just put like that, we have p p is 7.1 1. we're looking for theta and what is q negative 1.43 do i do this is this okay you ask well it depends what are our units when you use the original equation the units right will follow as i there is no prefix here you can press your calculator like that okay so if you use the original format of the equation you can just directly substitute whatever prefix has if let's say i write this one as i don't know la 10 times 10 to the power of whatever then you need to include the prefix inside so basically the note here i'll take away here is all terms 
is in SI unit without prefix because you use the original equation. Original. Okay, how to solve this? Uh? Mm. Okay, la, I do slowly. La, huh? Okay, here's how you solve. 0 0.1 divided by 7.41. It's this one. So I'll take 0 0.0135. Intermediate answer is equal to theta negative 1.43. So whenever you have this kind of thing, you want to solve this, you lock both sides because then you can bring down the power. Okay, so I will lock 0 0.0135 and this one will be log theta. The negative 1.43 I put in front. Okay, power descend downwards. Okay, lie. let me lock this answer. But I want to get an accurate one, so I'm not going to paste the answer because I am showing my substitution divided by negative 1.43. This is log theta, 1.307. So log theta will be 1.307. And your theta will be 10 to the power of 1.307. Okay. That theta will be 10 to the power 1.307. 20 something, I believe. Yeah, 20.3. 2, 3 SF, 2 to 3 SF is good enough. 20.3 degree Celsius. You can use this one, provided you know how to solve the equation. And you don't make mistake, no? Okay, so what did I do? I... Whatever I can move, I move first so that I get something that is neat, okay? Some number equal to theta power something. So I need to bring down the this power of negative 1.43 to isolate the theta. When solving algebra, when you solve for x, when you solve for theta, you want to quarantine the, you, the, quarantine the log theta on one side or quarantine the theta on one side. You can't quarantine because the theta is stuck with the index, so you log. Because log allows us to unstack, unstuck, unstuck the index and put in front. Ah, then you can bring over here and divide law. So you got log theta. But miss, I log already. You know how to unlock it back now. Anti log log, 10 to the power, go back. Okay, so that's a technique. Of course, you may be like, no la miss, you know what? I want to use the linearized equation. You can, you can. But there's a small thing that you have to take note of. Okay, let me copy the linearized equation first. The one that you did here. Log nu is Q log theta plus log P. Okay, so we go log nu is Q log theta plus log P. Can I just substitute the values? Like, you know, I put 0 0.10 here. Okay. And then I have Q. So I put negative 1.43 here. Looking for log theta. Okay. Then I have plus log P. So what was my P again? My P was 7.5. Four one. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? Okay, so we substitute in the the stuff that is given, P and Q and theta and all that, and we can press our calculator again, right? So I'll do it again in front of you. So there's no cheating. Okay, log 0 0.10. I bring over this 7.4 and minus, uh, minus log 7.41. <clears throat> Ta-da! Divided by negative 1.43. 
Okay, so I got this. You see, log theta is 1.30. I mean, it is a bit different, but it's close enough. Lah. Okay, so from here, I will get log theta is 1.308. Close enough. So I can find my theta now. I'll just zoom my calculator out. Wow. My hard working calculator. 1.308. Okay, so it's still 20.3. I am somewhat satisfied. So if you use equations and you substitute in directly, you are okay. All of both of these, you will have all terms in SI without prefix. Okay? So some of you, <laughs> some of you, I don't know where you learned this, but maybe it's your maths teacher, you will think of using a third way or a different way of using this equation. So I'm going to opt just going to continue this procedure, but on this equation. So some students may think, well, well, miss all, this one is y-axis. Okay, let me repeat the equation first. Log theta plus log p. Can we move this a bit? Da, 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 da. Okay. So log theta plus log p. So some students will think, you know what, teacher? Uh, you see, uh, you see, ah. Uh, this is y-axis. This is mx plus c. Why can't I use my gradient here, which is negative 1.43, fair enough, log theta here, plus, can't this whole thing be my y-intercept? I got y-intercept already, uh, chur, 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 chur. my y-intercept is 3.87. So I cannot put 3.87 here, man. I cannot, eh? I cannot, eh? Okay, chill first, ah. If you put your y-intercept here, I... If you put your y-intercept here, I mean, you can test a bit, lah. You try and see, log 7.41. Is it 3.87? Oh, wait. Before I test first, I need to make sure the other side is also legit. Okay, what about log nu? Can you put 0 0.1? If you decide to take the y-axis, don't forget your y-axis has a prefix inside. Okay, let's go back to your y-axis and stare at it for a bit. Your y-axis here has a prefix here. So if you are substituting it in, then if your nu is 0 0.1, when you put it inside your y-axis, oh, it will be 100 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So you should actually find log 100. You know why? Because you see, uh, here you already got the 10 to the power of negative 3 to get 7.41. If you get if you put back 3.87 without negotiating this prefix, your answer is going to be wrong. You can try, yeah. You put if you put 0 0.10 here, that means this term and this term is the same. So log 7.41 should be 3.87 or close to it. But if I press log 7.41, I can be very sure that it is not. It is not 3.87, it is 0 0.87. But, so you decide, lo. you got two choices. You either convert this to 100 or you divide this by 1. I mean, you convert you convert this to 100 by multiplying this one by 1,000 to negotiate the prefix or you divide this by 1,000. But what I will tend to do is, I'll tell students, since you are using properties from the graph, then here, this should be log 100 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Then you will get your answer. Okay, so I'll write here for you. This one, 
this is from graph. These two values is read directly from the graph y intercept. Okay, this 3.87 specifically. So if this y intercept is directly from the graph, the y axis was log slash 10 to the negative 3 PAS. Okay, which means this one should also be log nu slash 10 to the power of negative 3 PAS. Mm. So this have to be this because this is this. It wasn't me. It was the student who decided to do this. But now your problem is settled and you can press calculator. Or if you see this in their mark scheme, that's what they're trying to do. La. Okay, I don't blame you. Mark scheme also sometimes do like that. Which is like, why? There are easier ways. Okay, anyway, log 100 minus 3.87 divided by negative 1.43. See, 1.3076, 1 1.308. So from here, I will have my log theta is 1.308. Theta will be 20.3, la, naturally. So this is dangerous. If you are good at thinking about where you tend to mess up in your exam, me, I may not even remember that this one I need to change to, to suit the negative 3 prefix. 0 0.1 is equal to 100 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So this 0 0.1 here, I cannot put 0 0.1 here because of this 10 to the negative 3. So if you want to use properties from the graph, specifically the y-intercept, okay, then everything that is related to the y-intercept has to have that prefix embedded in it. Now, if you ask me, I would rather just deal with Q and P because if it's the original format of the equation, then I am sure that everything just have to be in SI. No prefix. No weird uh, 10 to the power negative 3 hiding around anywhere. But if you decide to do this way, please understand that this log P this P is 10 to the negative 3 PAS. So the prefix has to be consistent. So if this is 10 to the negative 3, this also must be 10 to the negative 3. So we cannot put 0 0.1. We have to put 100 times 10 to the power negative 3. Okay? So that's why if you see why they have a 100 there, this is what they're trying to do. Lah. But you know what, guys? It's only one mark. And, and this is this this is better. This is also better. So you know my suggestion. All right, that's it from Fat March 19. Uh let me know what you think. You see this is how they got the 100. Which mm -hmm. you don't need. Okay. I'll see you in the next recording. Whichever one you watch, my various avatar will say hi. All right, take care then. Bye-bye.